great, um, great friend of mine, um, although we've never actually met in person. Um, <laughs> he's somebody whose work just inspires me consistently. Uh, he's a great scholar. He's a great teacher. And he's coming to the end of his time at Harvard. He's a PhD candidate here. And he's actually going on to Yale to be an assistant professor there. Uh, there's a joke about, um, about first year assistant professors that we're baby assistant professors. So I guess you're, you're still, you're in formation as, a, as an assistant professor. Speaking of babies, uh, I do apologize. Mine's just jumped into the room. Uh, and so really excited about Fetus Assistant Professor has been recommended by Amy. Uh, really excited about Shiro Stork and thank you so much for agreeing to present Shiro. Thanks Rohan. Yeah, um, I'm gonna try to switch between screens here. See how Sure, I'm not hearing you. I'm not sure if it's an issue from my end. Can somebody else chime in with whether they can hear Shiro? Um, how about this? Oh yeah, I've got him now. Yep, I've okay. got you now. Yep. Sorry, switch the... And the uh, slides move, please. Slides are perfect, yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you, Rohan. So as Rohan said, I'm a PhD uh, candidate like Tyler, uh, studying political science. Uh, and today, but today I want to talk a bit about some of the uh, software and open source uh, package coding I kind of do on my side to help my research. And this is more like a package, like a package presentation uh, more than anything. Um, but I think, you know, the audience, uh, I'm really excited to kind of present this audience and look forward to some questions or feedback you might have. And this is, uh, you know, uh, we had like two, I think two great keynote speakers, uh, which I kind of sympathize with a lot. Um, in my work, I often take data sets that are kind of uh, commonly used data sets uh, and try to sometimes replicate work for writing assignments or just use them to merge into my own data sets. Um, and I think one thing uh, that people who try to replicate something have felt is that while well, replicate replicable code uh, and package versioning is a big challenge, but another big challenge in replication, at least I found, is uh, replicable data sets. Um, even if the data sets are publicly available, there's kind of a, uh, you know, a lag or a, a friction between kind of downloading that into your environment. Um, there's also so, uh, data replication packages might be very well organized, but you also have to figure out what the file paths are uh, that are um, in replication packages. And, and version control is great. Uh, and for, for kind of maintaining your code and uh, making that replicable. But when it comes to data sets, I think that's a bit more challenging when it becomes like big data sets, uh, the normal kind of uh, Git, Git framework doesn't often is not really efficient. Uh, and sometimes you have uh, data sets that are not plain text. So you can't really uh, look at Git diffs uh, when you're dealing with real world data sets. So the, um, this kind of very brief talk is to just introduce a package that I've contributed to, uh, which is the Dataverse package. Uh, and um, that's kind of, kind of propose one way to kind of help with the replication procedure, uh, as well as in our own work, is to uh, rely on data sets that are on public repositories like Dataverse. So rely on kind of Dataverse, data repositories, uh, like Dataverse for hosting, uh, and then use uh, client packages uh, like the one I'll present here to download those data sets directly within your code. So this is kind of like, you know, it's really just a wrapper for uh, with the API that Dataverse pr provides. It's kind of like a here here type of package, which I think hopefully makes uh, people's work uh, starting starting off projects a bit more easier. So to give you just a brief pick, like, like a snapshot of what what I'm talking about, the idea here is that when you write your R code uh, or Python, um, you can load the Dataverse package and you can directly get data sets. Uh, that are public on Dataverse by listing the file name of that data set and a identifier for the uh, Dataverse that the um, data set is hosted on, which is typically a DOI. 
Um, and that allows you to get the actual uh, data set. Um, and this is the, the same thing as going to your repository, clicking on the file, downloading it, uh, putting it in your path, and then reading in the data set. Uh, but for many applications, especially when you're working across servers or you're um, constantly switching organization, being able to directly import data sets like this uh, into your environment, I, I found uh, in my work is uh, saves a bit of time, which uh, can matter a lot. Um, yeah, so some of you may uh, uh, have uh, have data sets that are not on Dataverse. So just to give some, a brief introduction, uh, and I'll try to, and I want on Slack to ask a couple of, you know, ways in which you use Dataverse and uh, statistical program packages in a bit. But so Dataverse is basically a uh, one of the major uh, websites that host uh, free and also uh, um, confidential confidential data sets. Uh, it makes it easy to track the versioning and metadata data sets uh, and update. Uh, so researchers can update their own data set uh, and it's registered by a unique DOI. So um, we often, I think the case that people encounter data first is kind of the case what Tyler was talking about when you're asked to replicate a data set and you go to Dataverse and do a replication project. Um, you can also, I think is useful if, if common data sets that you often use are in data first, it's just kind of a um, useful thing to draw upon uh, across multiple projects. So I haven't tried, I haven't tried this slide, but I wanted to do a little poll question in the Slack. Um, let's see if this works. Um, this is more than anything, kind of just a very useful uh, survey for uh, us who are involved in the development of the package. Uh, to see what type, what are the common use cases of Interverse. So um, are you, do you use R, do you, do you use R or Python usually? Uh, and do you, um, if you interact with Dataverse, do you, off, do you, you know, is most of your time spent on downloading data sets that other people have uploaded? Or do you, do you spend more of your time kind of uploading your own data sets uh, and um, kind of maintaining it for other people to use? Um, Okay, yes, thanks Thanks to all for who are uh, uh, clicking on the poll. It seems like maybe, okay, so maybe like a half, a bit more than half of you haven't used Dataverse before. And then among the other half that uh, have, uh, uh, mainly this kind of a, our audience. Um, okay, uh, so, Okay, great. This is really helpful to know. Please, if you uh, feel free to um, during the talk, uh, enter your um, response. This this package is mainly geared towards uh, this presentation, at least. It's mainly geared towards the first type of user, which uh, uses R, but and uses data Dataverse mostly to download data sets, like replication and survey data sets. Uh, and the reason for that is because I'm that kind of researcher and. Uh, I started contributing to the package because to make that process easier. But there's definitely other people uh, who work on all aspects of this project. Um, so let me just give you kind of, a, I think just to help, it might be helpful to you know, uh, connect faces to the Dataverse uh, kind of open source development community. So, so there's a Dataverse is kind of uh, developed by a team at IQSS and that has its own kind of REST native API. Uh, Mercedes Crothas and Phil Durbin are one of some of the main people working on, on that the kind of Dataverse software. And if you are very familiar with APIs and you can kind of write your own API, then you, know, you don't really need to worry about the other stuff. But uh, if you're like me and you kind of you know, sometimes don't have the time to understand the uh, API client packages can be very useful, can be kind of uh, useful. So the one I'll be presenting today is the R client uh, that's hosted on the uh, repository here. Uh, and there's also a Python client that's in active development. The R client, some of you may have seen it before. Uh, it has was kind of on crown uh, fairly early on in 2013 and Thomas Leeper created and maintained that package. Um, since 2017, there was a bit of a lull uh, and there were some 
um, update to the Dataverse itself uh, that requires some upgrading. So uh, from last year or so, uh, Will, Will Beasley, who's the maintainer of the current maintainer of the package, and I uh, tried to add some of these features bit by bit that we thought would be would be useful. Uh, and we released the um, that upgraded version on Cron in January 20 uh, last month. Uh, currently, there's a, a, a glitch, and we're trying to get it on, get it back on Cran. I was hoping to get it back by this morning, but uh, it'll be up on Cran uh, in the next few days. And you can also always download it on the GitHub repo listed here. Um, Python, the Python client, client is mainly um, developed by Stefan Kostberger. Um, in Vienna, based in Vienna. And um, that also has similar functionalities. I would say it's more kind of the focus there is really about seamless main maintenance and kind of bulk editing of your data on Dataverse. Um, so that's kind of the lay of the land. I just wanted to um, uh, briefly talk about what the, for people since about half of you, it seems uh, haven't used Dataverse before, uh, I'll talk a bit about what the kind of general key terms and API uh, that'll be useful when using the package. So if you go to, uh, um, okay, I will, I'll start from kind of the uh, higher level things. So there's different, Dataverse is kind of a software and it has uh, dozens of servers uh, that different organizations host. Uh, made, I think the first and the biggest one is this Harvard server of the Dataverse, uh, and it's available on dataverse.harvard.edu. Um, the server has, uh, Dataverse organizes its data in uh, Dataverses. Okay, so this is a, shown here is a Dataverse that I often use. This is the uh, Cooperative Congressional Election Study. It's a large uh, survey which released is uh, all its uh, microdata publicly on Dataverse. And so Dataverse is this, a, a Dataverse is kind of a page with a bunch of different uh, uh, data sets that you would often call them. And here there's 165 uh, items and each um, item in a Dataverse uh, is called a data set. So for example, this first one, which I'll use is kind of a cumulative, is called cumulative CCS policy preference, uh, which Angelo made uh, last month. Um, when you click the cumulative, when you click a data, when you click a data set, uh, that, give, that brings you to a page like this, um, and a, which has some metadata about the data set, uh, uh, and also has files available uh, for download. Uh, one thing that, um, is kind of a Dataverse specific nomenclature uh, that I have to get used to is, so the data set refers to this kind of bundle of files and individual CSV files, et cetera, et cetera, are kind of called files in the Dataverse API. Um, so for a long time, I used to, you know, download data from this Dataverse, just kind of clicking on the download sign and putting it in my local computer, uh, but it turns out there was a Dataverse package, which makes that a bit easier. Um, so let me want to briefly demo um, what that looks like. Uh, the screen. Do people see that? I think the R screen. Yeah, I've got your R studio. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Here's the uh, uh, Tidyverse Haven Dataverse packages. Um, if you're using, if you're trying to download data uh, from a, you know, if you're just using the same server for all your data, uh, you can set a uh, default environment variable. Well, that's the Dataverse Harvard.edu, although you can also set it in your function. And this is the main function that I showed you uh, before. So there's a function that's new in the uh, version that we released uh, last month. Uh, that's get data frame by et cetera. Uh -oh. um, One second. 
Um, and I'll just kind of survey what I think is a, a fairly typical case. So there's a get data functions that start with get data frame. Um, this is a new function. Previously, there were functions that downloaded the file directly, but that downloaded the file in kind of a binary format that was really not usable within R. So get data frame is a wrapper that takes the file name of the package and the identifier for the data set. And you have a uh, data frame um, that's immediately usable for your, for your data. Um, there's also a couple of other kind of ways to get a data frame. Um, so there's a, uh, you can, if a, if a data file has a specific DOI, you can just include just a single DOI and it'll download that for you. Uh, there's also internally data, data verse files have a numerical ID, which is not really kind of displayed on the front end, but if you go to, for example, the metadata of a data set, uh, you can often um, find a numeric file ID here. And so you can just directly put in Uh, get there for by ID uh, and just a number, and that will give you get you the same output. Okay. Um, so that's that's really that's really it. Uh, we're uh, that's kind of the real main function that we've worked on uh, the past few weeks. Uh, one one more one more thing on the R side that I think can be important is this uh, distinction between ingested files and original files. So sometimes data sets like this one are Stata data sets or SPSS data sets or maybe RDS data sets. And those are ingested into Dataverse as plain text files. So people who don't have that software can use it. Um, however, sometimes you might want the original uh, data frame or the R object that has the distinct labels and values uh, that you want for your analysis. So you see all these columns, for example, in this data set here, uh, some of these are logic some of these are doubles. Actually, this is, uh, despite the file extension of TAB, this is actually a Stata data set. Um, and so it kind of essentially uh, discards the labels, value labels that are really important, for example, when you analyze a survey. So there's an option in the get data frame by name, uh, get data frame functions, where you can um, set that you want the original file before it was ingested. And then you need to specify, okay, well, what R function do you need uh, to read in that raw file? So in this case, we know that the data set is a DTA file. Um, so we can use the read DTA function in Haven. Um, and hopefully this won't crash on me again. Um, this basically, uh, gets the original version, which has the value labels, and you need to give it the appropriate um, function to read in it pro properly. Okay. My, yeah, R is having, R is having trouble. So, um, so, so I'll just say that, you know, so um, if you use the appropriate read-in function, you can often, you'll, you'll get the uh, value labels that come often with Stata or SPSS data sets. I'll just briefly show the Python version uh, that I mentioned. I'm not a heavy Python user, but the PyDataverse is a very well-documented uh, function that's, uh, I think, uh, I would go, I would use PyDataverse if you're kind of bulk editing your own uh, um, Dataverse files instead of the R Dataverse, just because the functionalities are, are, are there um, in that. Um, so for example, you can load the PyDataverse uh, libraries. Uh, this loads a particular um, data, plain text data set uh, for US COVID cases. Um, and reads it in as a pandas data file. Uh, so you can 
um, uh, you can access the uh, code which I'll post, but you'll get the same thing. Um, you can download data set and directly work with kind of clean, tidy data frames uh, in your environment. Um, I know I'm almost out of time, so I, I think I'll just move back and wrap up. Yeah, so the, you know, the suggestion of this talk is try uh, and use client packages like Dataverse and PyDataverse uh, to download other people's data sets, even kind of your own data sets that you might choose to put on a Dataverse and it'll be very easy to uh, down use those data sets without kind of uh, carrying it around different repositories and different servers. And we're kind of working on extensions to kind of work on the most common use cases. So the user survey and any uh, comments you might have is really useful. Hopefully, I mean, the goal is to have it be, have the Dataverse package be a seamless package so, so that you can also create your own packages that are customized for your own types of data sets. And instead of, you know, having data sets in your package, uh, have have, uh, have functions that load the data data sets for you, which is uh, often what more sophisticated packages like tidy census and 538 do. Um, so that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks all very much. Thanks, Jero. That was awesome. Um, I love the idea of building software to solve your own problems. And I think that's what, um, that's certainly what my R packages do. <laughs> Uh, there's a few questions. Uh, we'll, I'll go through those. Uh, but if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to add them into the, the Slack chat or, or the Zoom chat. Uh, this question about SAS. I don't know, is it SAS or SAS? Um, but um, can, we, can we read in SAS tables and maintain variable types? Sure. Yeah. 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 So actually, um, I mean, the function is called get data frame, but it's really get any R object function. Uh, so if the file that's uploaded on Dataverse is a SAS file, then you can um, download as a SAS file. You'll need the appropriate function in R to read that. But uh, I know Haven has a good uh, read SAS function. So you can, I mean, so it'll get imported in, in the way that Haven will import SAS files. But there's really nothing about the, Dataverse interface that restricts the types of files you can use. Yeah, the Haven is such a lifesaver um, these days. Um, I, we, I, I think you've posted the slide deck. Um, are, are you planning on posting the slide deck? I'm not sure. Yes, um, yeah, I will. Yeah, maybe you could just add it in the Slack at some point. Mm -hmm. um, question about that. Uh, there's a question about, can you use this the Dataverse client to actually upload the, the data? Uh, yes, uh, both the R and Python packages have those functionalities, but I would say at the moment the Python functionality is much more well tested uh, in terms in terms of that. Um, we your, we had an upload function before, uh, but with some changes to Dataverse, there's this kind of sound bugs that are on are working on our repo. And a uh, question about confidential data sets that you don't want to share with others, such as health data sets. Um, do you have any comments about uh -huh. the, the yeah, about so, Dataverse and those? Yeah, so the examples I showed you today were basically public data sets, which you didn't even need a login you know, to, to download. Um, Dataverse does have options uh, to uh, have the data set be protected for certain users or you need a certain form. And so for those data sets, you would need to, in, you would need to kind of register your uh, API token in Dataverse and the Dataverse client has an uh, option to take in your API token. Um, so um, you can, you can do that. I mean, depending on the particulars of the, com the um, confidential, confidential of the data set and also in order to update and edit data versus you also need an api token uh, but the api functionality is all built in and keys and things is built into the package um, yeah oh that's really nice um, what's the plan on the development are you going to keep maintaining it 
Um, are you? Oh, well, I'm, and... sure. Yeah, uh, I'm not the maintainer. So Will Will has uh, done uh, almost all kind of the uh, testing infrastructure and and maintenance. Um, I mostly contributed to just get this get data frame function. So this so the dataverse itself is maintained by a professional IQSS team. Uh, but the both R and Python data verses are currently maintained by people basically, you know, um, volunteers. Um, so I think uh, pull requests and uh, help is always, always uh, um, very useful. Next year when you start, you can um, just hire RAs and um, and and uh, get them to maintain it for you. <laughs> uh, did you want to? I'm not seeing any other chat um or questions um oh just wait john paul susie says how do you prevent the api being abused if it's built in I, I think the idea is that that the user has to put in the api key right it's a field within the function is that right yeah yeah um, um but yeah you shouldn't share share um, <laughs> no um i'm sorry the thing crashed uh why i i saw a comment on the on this on the um zoom chat um, for what it's worth, I just tried it and it works now. So um, it's a fairly large data set. So maybe that was one of the reasons. Um, but uh, just to do what I was trying to do before, uh, you include a file name, but you say read it as a DTA file. And now you have a survey data set, which may, uh, retains uh, the um, labels. So you know that one means greatly increase and so forth. Whereas if you ingested the um, uh, plain text file, you'd only get one, two, three, four, five, and you have to like go back and forth on the code book to understand what those were. Uh, so nice. Uh, there was a lot of like just based on your your survey, your poll, which I didn't realize you could do, but that, that's just fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of folks who hadn't used Dataverse. Uh, did you want to do? You've got two minutes left. Did you want to do a two minute sales job on 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 why <laughs> we've got a variety of fields here? Do you want to give yeah. a, like brief yeah. overview? Um. Well, you know, I'm not um, affiliated with the Adverse team, although it is host. It is kind of um, hosted in IQSS, where I'm an affiliate, um, and I, there are other repositories. I think maybe discipline specific that uh, um, are e equally good places to upload your data. Obviously, the person needs to, the author needs to be willing to share the data in some form for this you know, client package to be of any use. But I think I found that the CCS is the cert, which is a survey that I work on, I think has benefited a lot by having all the responses, including kind of geographic data on Dataverse. Uh, I checked this morning and I think cumulatively the data sets have been downloaded like over a hundred thousand times. Uh, and the fact that it's kind of, you can download it without, you know, making uh, an account or describing how you're going to use the data set uh opens you know your data up to really uh why uses for public consumption um so um, i'm a big fan of it yeah good sales job uh thanks very much Shiro, for a <laughs> wonderful presentation uh i am looking forward to using this package and building it into my workflow myself because this is a problem that i have so i am personally very grateful to you for for, for fixing it um, thank you very much Hey, thanks. Sorry about the glitches. Yeah.